this day. Sunday morning is a wonderful time. We don't come to church because we're religious. We come to church because we want to be in your presence. And we thank you for delivering us from religion, Lord. Religion doesn't save. Jesus saves. And Lord, we don't want to just do things religiously just because it's what we're supposed to do, like I'm a Christian, i got to go to church. No, Lord, we do it because it's a privilege, it's an honor. And we thank you, Lord, for Miracle Life Church here today, Father. And everyone that's listening, Lord, hallelujah, on, on the, the Lord's social media, that the blessing of God would fall upon them even now. They would receive more than they were expecting. We pray, God, for unexpected blessings right now. We pray, Father, there be unexpected refreshing coming right now. That you said that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, Amen. which means they shall exchange their limited strength for his unlimited resources. Amen. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint Amen. because they're receiving from a supply that never runs dry. And everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Someone say praise the Lord. How many Pentecostals we got here? How many hostels we got here? Are you hostile for the kingdom? Amen. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I think we need to put on the AC. It's getting too quiet in here already. Praise God. Now, the name of the title of this message is Our Mission Impossible. You know, like the series, Mission Impossible. Amen. But what you have to do for God is actually greater and more impossible than what Tom Cruise does because he's just an actor. Amen. But our, our mission impossible is we are miracle healers. I first put in there healers. But we're not just healers from the Lord Jesus Christ. We are miracle healers. Amen. And I want to talk about that because a healing that comes from God is a miracle. Amen. In fact, listen to me. Everything God does is a miracle because he lives in the realm of the miraculous, which means he lives in the realm of the impossible. Mission impossible is normal with God Otherwise, he's not God. What makes him God Almighty is the fact that he lives in the supernatural realm of unlimited resources. And he lives there. So everything he does, in fact, every answer to prayer, no matter what that answer is, no matter how big that answer is, how small it is, is still a miracle. Amen. Why? Because it comes from God. And if God answers your prayer, it's not because you're somebody or I'm somebody. It's because he is the great I am. He's the one that makes promises in his word. And he wants to challenge us. There's a challenge for you to believe God to do something miraculous in your life. That is something that is impossible to happen. Something in the natural that cannot happen. And the scripture is Luke 18, 27, right under your, your uh, title. And this is Jesus talking. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Say that with me. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Amen. That means if it's possible with men, God will not touch it. Yes. Those things that are impossible for men and women to do, in the natural realm, those things are possible with God. So God lives and moves in the impossible. And that's hard for us to comprehend and grasp a hold of and wrap our mind around it. Because everything we do in our natural mind has to have a reason. And logic is based upon reason that there has to be a cause of something, an effect of something, that what goes up must come down. The law of physics, the law of science is based on cause and effect. On experimentation, that's where we get the word experiment from. It all comes from, that's what science is. Science is nothing more than men trying to test everything out in a test tube to see what it's made out of. But they don't understand who made it. That's the problem. Is they can talk about it all they want, but they still don't understand where the Big Bang came from. They say, oh, well, everything was created by a big bang. Yeah, but where did that come from? Oh, well, we haven't gotten to that yet. What do you mean you haven't gotten to that? We need to know. They don't know. That's the problem. They don't know, but the Bible knows because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Elohim created 
The world's out of nothing. That's what that means in the Hebrew. He didn't have anything to work with. He just spoke it, and it was, he spoke it into being, into existence. Because he is the great I am. He's the great existing one. He's always been. He always will be. And when people don't believe in him, they have no purpose in life. We have to know what our purpose is. We have a mission that we are on as Christians. Our Christian mission. Our mission is sons and daughters of God that are born of God. Now we're on a mission. We have to know what that mission is. We have to know what our purpose is. And before we can know what our purpose is, we got to know who he is. And we got to know who we are. In him. Yes. See, once you start understanding who you are, you're going to start seeing impossible things becoming possible. Yes. You're, start, you're going to start stepping out of the boat of your limited, finite mind, of your limitations of your circumstances, and you're going to believe God to help you to walk on the water. You're going to believe that when you speak to that mountain, that mountain shall be removed. Yes. Because you spoke it. Because you said it. Because God said it, and you're only saying what God already said. And when you say what God says, you're going to have God answers and God results. And God challenges us all the time to believe him for something that is beyond what medicine, what health, what the doctors say, what scientists say. He says, no, you believe me for it. And it's sad because we've allowed the secular world We've allowed the unbelief that we live in, a community of unbelief of Nazareth. We live in a Nazareth of unbelief where they couldn't, they couldn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God because they looked at him in the natural and they said, we know who you are. We know your brothers and sisters, that buck two sister you got. No. <laughs> With the big ears? No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, a little joke. But, you know, he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth, Remember? They said, Nazareth was not the best. I've been there. You know, the Lord let me. It's up on a hill. It's hill, hillside. It's looking down towards the Sea of Galilee. It's up on a hill. It's, it's on an incline. And, and nothing good came out of Nazareth, but Jesus came out of Nazareth. Amen. 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 And they said that he could only heal a few sick people in Mark chapter 6 because of their unbelief. Unbelief means all pistis. Pistis is the word faith. Apistis means opposite. Apistis means opposite of faith. What they had looked like faith, but it wasn't faith. A lot of times we think we have faith, but we don't. Because when you have faith, you're going to have results. Faith always gets results. And faith is not something you can work up in yourself. Faith is something you have to have from God. Faith comes from your relationship with God. It's not something that I can mentally begin to work myself up into, or I start to, I got to believe, I got to believe, I got to believe. Because we don't know what we believe because it's of the subconscious. Yes. It's of the subconscious mind. And we don't understand that. So what you think you have is not what you really think you have. You don't know until the Holy Spirit shows you. That's why I'm so gl glad God gave us the gift of tongues. And if you don't have the gift of tongues, it is the voice of your inner man. It is the voice of your spirit. Ex tongues is expression of what's on the inside. Just as I'm expressing my thoughts right now. That's what tongues are. I'm expressing my mind, but tongues is an expression of your spirit. It bypasses the logic of the mind. Amen. And you need it, and I need it. Amen? Yeah. And God wants to give you so much when you begin to pray in the spirit. The Bible says, it says, how be it in the spirit you speak mysteries. Mysteries to the mind, not to the spirit, to the mind. The mind is unfruitful. Amen. How many know that's true? Praise God. Hallelujah. So those things that are impossible, that's mission impossible. Those things that are impossible with Tom Cruise, get out of Scientology. Amen. In Jesus' name, save him, Lord. Maybe he'll tune in somehow. Amen. Those things that are impossible with men are possible with God. But we have to know what our mission is. We need to know our purpose as Christians. You need to hear this like you never heard it before. Number one, we need to understand why Jesus came. We need to understand. We could come up with some quick answers like that. But I want you to see this all as if you just heard it for the very first time. What was the mission of Jesus? What was the purpose of Jesus? What was his mission? We have to get this. It's been coming so clear to me recently. It's becoming more clear to me than before. That's why I'm sharing this with you today. It's becoming more clear. The mission of Jesus, of why he came, 
And it's a message that is so wonderful and so loving that it's hard for us to grasp it. And it really is because you don't hear any good news anymore. In fact, there is no good news in this world. But the message of Jesus is good news. That God loves you. And God wants to save you. And God wants to heal you. But I want God to heal me. No, God wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. That's the revelation I want you to get today. That God wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. He has a passion in his heart to heal you. Because he took all the sin upon Jesus. He took all the consequences of sin upon the Lord Jesus. The pure, unblemished Lamb of God. He put all the sins that surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains and sorrows. Amen? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Isaiah saw it. Isaiah 53. And with his stripes. Amen? And the Bible says that it pleased the Lord to bruise him. The word bruise means to crush him. It pleased, it pleased the Lord? Why? Because he wanted to see you healed. Amen. That with his stripes you are healed. So we have a message. We have a purpose as brothers and sisters in Christ to know the Lord. Jesus came to forgive, to save, to heal our broken world. Remember that. When you're you're going out every day as a Christian, getting up in the morning, going to work, as you have a ministry that God's given you, we're all ministers. This is every Christian's ministry. Amen. It's to understand why Jesus came. He came to forgive our sins. He came to save us from punishment, eternal damnation and hell. He came to save us from our sins. Amen. That's what his name means, Yeshua. And it's not God is our salvation. It's, it's Jehovah. Yahweh is our salvation. That's what Yeshua means. He came to forgive. Say it with me. He came to forgive, to save, to heal our broken world. That is a revelation. It really is. You might have been a Christian a long time, but you realize that's the kind of God we're serving. Do you realize today, and I hope in Jesus' name, that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to see what I'm seeing? That we're serving a God that cares about people, that loves people, that wants to heal their broken lives, that wants to better their lives, that wants to restore their lives, where their lives are are going down. Many people are so sick and afflicted, and they don't know what to do. And the doctors don't know what to do. There's a medicine for everything nowadays. And then they say, well, this will help you live longer if you take this. But, and then they mention all these side effects that are horrible. Yes. Yes. And I said, I said, why don't they just turn to Jesus? Right. He says, with long life, I will satisfy you. Amen. He promises you long life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He came to forgive, to save, to heal our broken world, to give each of us every single one of us, a personal living relationship with God, our Father, our Creator. So we can become a new person through that relationship. Number one, He wants relationship. That's what prayer is. It's talking to God, sharing your heart with God. How many know God wants a relationship with you? The Creator wants you to know Him, not just about Him. This is life eternal that they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. John 17, 3. Amen? So He came to give each one of us, say, that's me, a personal living relationship with God our Father, our Creator. That'll give you purpose. So, So we can be a new person. Amen? That means a new beginning, a new start, a new chapter in your life with a successful life, a miracle life. That's what a miracle life is all about. That God wants to give you a life of miracles. Christianity is a lifestyle of miracles. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to give you a miracle lifestyle. Turn somebody next to you. God wants to give you a miracle lifestyle. Tell two people. Christianity is a, a miracle way of life. Yes, amen. Remember that Christianity without miracles is just another dead religion. Yes. We have to believe God for the miraculous. We have to believe God to do super and abundantly above all we can ask or think. Yes. 
How many know we got to get with God's program? God wants to see more miracles in your life than you do. Because he's a miracle working God. If it's not a miracle, then it wasn't God working. It's just you trying to make things just eking by, just getting by. Just help me paycheck to paycheck, get by, Lord. God wants to give you more. God wants to bless your life. He wants to heal your hurts and your wounds. He wants you to have this message because now you're the one with the message. Amen? Amen. He wants to give you a beautiful future. Happy happy ever after future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants you to have a beautiful life, a wonderful life. Make everything beautiful. Ecclesiastes 3.11. He will make everything beautiful in its time. Everything. God wants all things to work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28. God wants to bless you. Turn somebody. God wants to bless you. Go like this. God wants to bless you. Turn another person. God wants to bless you. Come on. Come on. God wants to bless your life. God wants you to have an abundant life. God wants to heal you of your hurts and your wounds. How do I know? Because Jesus came and did it. God became a man. God became a man named Jesus of Nazareth. Matthew 4, 23 and 24. And Jesus went and walked about. And when I read that today, it says in the King James, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue. But all of a sudden when I read it, I heard this, that Jesus walked about, and I saw it with my eyes, and I looked down at the Bible, and I said, where did I see that? It was the Lord, because I looked it up in the Greek New Testament study, and the word that he went about means he walked about. So God wanted me to see that today. I literally saw it. He gave me a little mini vision there, that Jesus went and walked about. How many know he didn't get in a car? I don't remember them saying he was on a horse or on a chariot. That's all he had back then, right? He didn't have Fred Flintstone type of thing? No? Amen? No, Jesus went and walked about. Come on, you're going to walk it out. Everywhere you walk, God wants you to carry Jesus with you. Jesus went and he walked about all Galilee. Hallelujah. Teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. It's good news. He's talking about the kingdom. You've got to get the message of the kingdom. I said, you got to get the message of the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. Well, what is that? God wants to heal you. God wants to rule over your life, not to be a domineering dictator, not to be an oppressive, cruel tyrant. That's Satan. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about, who walked about, doing good everywhere he went and healing and healing all that were oppressed. And that word oppressed means under the tyrant power dictatorship of the devil. He came to set the captives free from that evil, wicked bully, that tyrant. And that means he wants to heal us of every sickness and every disease. He preached the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. Lord, let your kingdom rule over our lives. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Not some, but all manner of sickness. You got a sickness today? You got a problem, affliction? He heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. His fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all sick people who were taken with various diseases and those with pains and torment. That word torments means pains, afflictions that were tormenting them in severe pain. And those that were possessed with devils. So there's more than one devil. There's a Satan, but there's a lot of devils running around. And these people got devils. Somehow they got demons or devils in the same word. They got these evil spirits in them. They must have been doing something bad to get them evil spirits in them. They don't just show up at your door and say, I'm coming in. No, we let them in. And they came in and they did not want to leave. And Jesus Jesus had to cast them out. He received them into his heart and then he cast them out because he loves the sinner, hates the sin. Amen? How do know we got to repent of our sins? The devil wants to come in through the little cracks in the door if you just let him in. 
He came, they brought those that were possessed with devils. Why did they bring all these people? Why did they bring them with various diseases, all these sick people? Because they saw the power of God in action. They said, if he could do for that one, if he, if he could do for that person, then he could do for me. He could do for my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, my son, my daughter, my, my best friends. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And those that were lunatics, <laughs> you know, they, they say with ep epilepsy, they said it's epilepsy because they said the Jews didn't really know what that was, where they, they had convulsions. But the word lunatic, how many know what the lunatic means? It means like you've lost your mind, but it means you're moonstruck from the loon, Luna. Yeah, Luna. It means that when the moon would come out, they said that the power of the moon would cause people to go crazy. Amen. Vincent Osa, when I was over there in Africa with his family, they said, they said that he, he said, we should have a day where we just said, we're going to have a lunatic day. We're going to have one conference of just, we want to invite all the lunatics. A, there's a lot of them in America. And let them come, and we're going to pray for them. He goes, how many pastors would sign up for that? And he started laughing. He was very bold, you know. He broke the power of witchcraft in Africa. Benson Idaosa, amen. He went to be with the Lord. His, his wife and his family still around. I got to spend time with him, minister in their home, be, be with them. Hallelujah. And he, and he healed those that were paralyzed, amen. He said they brought those that were paralytics, and he healed them. What did he do? He said, well, I'll think good thoughts towards you. We send our thoughts. I hate that. They do that on TV. They do that on the news. Oh, our thoughts are with you. No, we don't want your thoughts, okay? We want God's thoughts. We want your prayers. The Bible says he healed them. Hallelujah. No matter what it was, he healed them. Do you need a healing today? He wants to heal you. You say, yeah, I need a healing. Well, he wants you to find how you can receive that healing because he wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. Because if he did it, then he's still the same. This is the pattern. If Jesus was not doing the will of God, then he would have been out of the will of God. Then he would have been in sin, right? Yep. This is the will of God right here. He healed them. Say, Lord, you're healing me. Lord, you're healing me. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith says it's already done before you even feel the difference. You start claiming it before you experience it. He said, he said, Lord, I know you've already heard me. Jesus said that before Lazarus was even risen from the dead. He came to raise Lazarus from the dead, been dead four days. And he said, Father, I know you've heard me and you always hear me. But I'm saying this for the people's sake that are standing here. He said, you already heard me. Hey, he's still dead. And you're saying he already heard you? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And if he hadn't said his name, everybody would have came forth. Amen. He served them. Now, I want you to see this. The word healed them, the word healed them there literally means in the Greek that he served them. How many like that? He served them. God is serving you. Jesus is a servant of all. He served them by miraculously restoring their total person like brand new. That's what he does. He wants to serve people. If you got a problem with people, then you need to get at the altar. You need to get in your prayer time and ask God to forgive you for all the people you can't stand. One minister got so burned out with people, he said, I hate people. I said, you got a real problem. You got a real problem because you, Jesus loves people. And when you start hating people, there's no ministry in you anymore. Because the Bible says here, that word there, he healed them, means he served them. That's who we're talking about. We're talking about a God that wants to serve others. You say, well, that doesn't sound, I want people to serve me. No, that's a problem. We got to get self off the throne. We got to become unselfish. We got to be delivered from self. The biggest deliverance is not from the devil, it's from yourself. It's from your self centeredness. It's from only caring about the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. You've heard that one? You know all these, don't you? Praise God. That's right. Amen. He served them. By how? By miraculously restoring them. Why don't I say that? Because it was a miracle. There was no cure. There was nobody to help them. They didn't have even good doctors back then. They were afraid to go to doctors back then. Even now, praise God. <laughs> but imagine what it was like 2,000 years ago. Talk about experimenting. Right? Right? The, the lady with the issue of blood for 12 years and she spent everything and she gradually got worse instead of better until she touched the hem of his garment. Yeah. 
If I can but touch the hem of his garment, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, that's all I need. I don't have any more money. I don't have any more doctors. I don't have anybody to help me. But if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. I want to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. I said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the miracle working business. I got good news for you. Hold on. Don't give up. Don't let go. Don't throw away your faith that has a great recompense and reward. Say, God, you're healing me. Amen. Say, God, you're healing me. Hallelujah. That with the stripes that were laid on the back of Jesus, Amen. I am healed. Amen. And that word healed means I'm made whole. And whole means a total person. That means a whole person. Spirit, soul, and body. It means a whole person. Healing your spirit, that's your relationship with God. Healing your soul, that's your relationship with yourself. That's your relationship with your thought life, with your emotional right, <laughs> with, your, with your will, what your desires are. God wants to heal you of you. God wants you to get along with yourself. God wants to heal your soul. That soul was in a problem in a lot of people's lives. That mind will give you problems. I know from experience. <laughs> Amen. The mind's powerful, and he wants to heal your mind. He wants to heal your emotions. Some people just live by their emotions, up and down, all around. Magic Mountain, roller coaster Christianity. I'm feeling terrible today. I'm going to go out and eat worms. And the next day, I love the Lord. Everything's fantastic. The next day, oh, I lost my victory. The next day, I'm full of victory. The next day, oh, I lost everything. I don't think I'm going to make it. See, that's going by emotions. That's letting your emotions rule your life. God wants to heal your emotions. Jesus came not only to heal your body and your physical problems and condition, he came to heal the soul. And if he, they say a lot, of, a lot of sicknesses are psychosomatic. That means they're in the mind. Your mind has so much power. That's right. It all goes back to your healing of your spirit. If, you're, if your spiritual relationship with God is out of touch, out of control, come on. If it's out of sync, if it's out of whack, it's like a washer. Amen. It's running and it's agitating. It's going all over the place and thumping all over. A lot of times that's how our spirit is because it's not right with God. And God wants to heal you. Spirit, soul, and body. If he heals you spiritually, inwardly, he's going to heal you outwardly in your body. Come on, somebody. Say amen. When you say amen, I'll finish quicker. Amen. <laughs> And verse 25 says, great crowds. It says the King James, multitudes of people. Great crowds followed him. People will follow you when you heal them. Yeah. They followed Jesus because he healed them. Great crowds followed him coming from Galilee and Decapolis. And Decapolis is the district of the ten cities. That's what that means. They're on the east side of Galilee. There were ten cities, amen, amen. all throughout the, the, the Mediterranean area. And Jerusalem, Judea, from the other east side of Jordan, all these areas heard about Jesus healing and doing miracles. Hallelujah. Miracle has no sense at all. It's nonsense. There's no answer for a miracle except God. Amen. Catherine Kuhlman said at the end of her book, I Believe in Miracles, she only knew two things that she could say that she knew. She said, when these, she saw incredible miracles. You need to read the book, I Believe in Miracles. It'll give you faith. Amen. And she, I, I'm glad I read the back of the book. And she said there in the back about the miracles, she said, I only understood two things when all these miracles were happening. People being healed that were dying, people and curable sicknesses instantly healed right in front of their faces. Maybe some of you wanna, were in a Catholic Kuhlman service. If you're that old, hallelujah. Amen. She said, I only knew two things. Number one. I had nothing to do with it. Amen. And number two, it was the, the hand of Almighty God. Amen. This was the work of the creator, of the Almighty being, because nobody could do these things. These were impossible things that were happening in those services. Amen. Hallelujah. This is Sunday morning service. Yes. 
This should be a miracle service every time we come together. You can't help but get excited about Jesus. When you start feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit, you can't help but get a little loud. You can't help but get a little excited. When you begin to feel the power of the Holy Spirit, when you begin to sense the presence of God on you, you start becoming a giant and the devil becomes a grasshopper. Hallelujah. <laughs> you start getting some muscles because you had your Holy Ghost spinach like Popeye the sailor. Amen. And I used to eat that spinach from the can when I was little because I thought it would make me strong. It tasted sour because my dear mother used to get the canned spinach where it tastes like vinegar. It smelled like one of my socks. No, I'm just kidding. But Lord have mercy. Then I used to look at my muscles afterwards. <laughs> A lot of people, did you know nationwide, the kids all ate spinach when they watched that? But now we got our Holy Ghost spinach. It's the Word of God right here. And you can eat that, and you can eat the Word, and you can get strong in the Word. He said, I speak these things unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the Word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. First John chapter 2, amen? How many know God wants you to be strong in the Word? Be strong, be filled with the knowledge of His Word. Hallelujah. Great crowds followed Him. People will follow you when you see them cured. When you see them healed, they're going to get other people healed. It's like a chain reaction. People follow Jesus because He, what, cured them. Cure means it's done. He got the answer. How many need some answers? Raise your hand. How many need some answers to prayer? An answer is a miracle. Remember that. Thank God for the miracles that have happened. Thank God for the answers of prayer that you've already had. If you're not thanking for what he's already done, why would he do anything else? we got to be thankful. We have to recognize and acknowledge the hand of Almighty God in our lives. We can't become complacent. We can't become dull. We can't become insensitive. We can't become stupid. You know what stupid means? It means insensitive. It means dull. It's where we're not really getting it anymore because we're too busy with our own lives and everything that we're neglecting God. Don't neglect the Lord. Don't neglect the one who's done so much. Amen? Why is Jesus living in us? Why is his mis- what is his mission through us? We are miracle healers. That's what we are, because the miracle worker is inside of us. Amen? Hallelujah? We are miracle healers of what? The spirit, person's relationship with God. Of the soul, person's relationship with self. That's the mind, will, and emotions. We are miracle healers of the body, a person's relationship with their physical condition. Amen? Amen? Amen. And it's got to start in the spirit. It's not, it's not body, soul, and spirit. It's spirit, soul, and body. Say, I'm a three-part being. He was in a Jew. Now he's in you. Point at somebody. He was in a Jew. Now he's in you. That's a revelation. For Paul said, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Yes. Colossians 1.27. Christ in you. Say, Christ in me. Christ in Say, he was in a Jew, but now he's in me. Right. And now he's in you. Amen. Amen. And he can't do it by himself. He can't carry this mission of the kingdom by himself. Amen. Amen. This impossible, mission impossible. You are his hands extended. Turn tell somebody, you are his hands extended. Amen. You are his mouth. You are his heart. You carry his presence to people. That's your purpose. That's your mission. Did you know that? Did you know you're a miracle worker? You're a miracle healer? You're a miracle deliverer? You're the answer to prayer? You're going to make a difference in a person's eternal future? You're going to make a difference in their lives when you showed up? Amen? He needs you to go. He needs you to walk. He needs you to talk to people from his heart to theirs. Tell them Jesus loves you. He is the answer. We were in the store yesterday, and I was paying for something, you know, some coffee. And I said to the lady, I said, Jesus loves you. And it was a Native American. She goes, well, I'm Native American, actually from the Gila River area and the tribe and everything. She goes, 
So you don't believe you don't believe in the Bible? She goes, no, we don't believe in that. And I said, well, you know what? He loves you. She goes, I know. And I said, so, well, you know, I said, you, you, you ought to read the Bible. Maybe you'll believe. She goes, I don't believe that. I said, well, you got to read it first to believe it. If you don't read it, how can you believe until you read it? I said, why don't you give him a chance? She stopped and she goes, she looked at me like, who is this guy? That's a good opportunity right there. Amen. And she starts saying, well, our tribe, our tribe, we take care of ourselves and we, we have a lot of love in our community. I said, well, that's God. I said, that's God caring. That sounds good to me. She went, hmm. <laughs> how many know that was a seed being planted? Amen. Come on, say, I'm planting seeds. Amen. Say, I'm going to plant more seeds Amen. because the seed is in you. And there's power in the seed. You got to believe in the seed. You got to believe the seed is going to perform. Amen? Amen. Plant that seed. You don't know what's going to happen. Maybe God will touch her. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Turn on the other page. We only got two more hours. Okay. We need to get ready. Turn to the one next to you. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> and be equipped. God wants to equip you. He wants to give you equipment. Amen. He wants to get you prepared and ready for the next level. So I'm getting ready. Amen. So what do we need to do? We need to cry out in repentance. This was a setup. Amen. When you say, yeah, I want to get ready to be used. Well, God says, you know what? You got to cry out. We need to cry out. We need to all cry out in sincere repentance for a deeper sanctification than what we've had. There's, there's more of a sanctified life where every fresh revelation calls for a new dedication. When God starts showing us things and touching our lives, we're responsible for that. We're responsible for the light that we've received. Jesus said it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than it will be for the cities that he walked through. Because if they had seen the miracles, that's, if they would have seen the miracles in Sodom and Gomorrah that all these cities Jesus walked through saw, they would have repented a long time ago in dust and ashes. Wow. So how many know that we got a lot of work to do? We have to cry out to God. Lord, give us that repentance today. We're not going to just say, yeah, we're this. We're going to be used of God. God can't do anything with an unclean vessel. God cannot do anything when there's such a mixture in our life of the world that we're more in love with the world than we are with Jesus. When we have more of a desire to have the things of this world than we want the things of the Lord. Where most churches have become nothing but social clubs. That's all they are. Instead of coming for it to be a Holy Spirit experience that's going to transform their lives and empower them with dyna dynamic living. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Say this with me. Cleanse me, Jesus. Cleanse me, Jesus. In fact, stand with me and say this. Say, cleanse me, Jesus. Cleanse me, Jesus. I want you to use me in a greater way. Can you say amen? And when the cleansing takes place in me, the Spirit will fall upon me now and fill me to overflowing with a new anointing. We pray for that in Jesus' name right now. For everyone, Lord, listening in live stream, Lord. For everyone, Lord, listening on social media. We pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon you right now with a new anointing, with a fresh touch of God on your life. We rebuke that depression off of you. We rebuke that spirit of pessimism and negativity off of you right now. All that negativity goes in Jesus' name. And we speak right now, Lord, for the atmosphere to change. For Lord, we're going to be having an atmosphere of healing, of deliverance, of the joy of the Lord, the love of God. The peace of God yes, that's not dependent upon our circumstances. Yes, Say this with me. Take down all the walls down all the wall. that I have built in my life. Yes, Those, things Those things that are blocking the Holy Spirit from moving and healing my spirit, soul, and body. Amen. 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 Say this with me. I forgive, I forgive. every person. Every and I forgive myself right now. And when I let things go, and I bring everything offensive and every hurt to the light, the blood of Jesus 
will cleanse it and sweep it away forever. <laughs> and I receive restoration. Because David said, he restores my soul. Say this with me. I cannot be defeated unless I am depleted. So I make a deeper commitment to live in an atmosphere of praise, of prayer, and of Scripture. Scripture reading. Scripture teachings. Just filling myself with the Scriptures. We need to do that, brothers and sisters. It is so important. It is so important to have the Holy Spirit life. If we want to live in the Spirit and stay filled with the Spirit, God wants to stop up all the holes. So what happened to that blessing? It's Monday morning. Well, you could have a Monday morning blessing. Not a blue morning, amen, but a golden morning. Say this with me. What I have, everybody wants. The world is so hungry to hear what I say. Because no religion can tell people what I can tell them. Because I have the best message in the whole world. The message of good news. That it's God's kingdom authority to bring forgiveness and healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. In the name Jesus Christ, Amen. the Son of the living God. Amen. 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 Say this with me. Because I have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit. and I have, faith I have faith in Jesus' name, I am a healer. I am a healer. I'm going to go and heal people. I'm going to speak healing on people. I'm going to believe God to heal them because these signs shall follow me that believe. I am a miracle worker. I am a lifter upper. When I show up and people will meet me, they will have new hope. They will experience the presence of God like never before. In their lives, it will transform them and set them free. When I touch people, Jesus is the miracle life in me. And he does the miracle work. Hallelujah. And I put the devil in little letters there because he don't deserve capital letters. The devil's under your feet. Where's he at? Look at the bottom of your shoe. We're going to put that devil down and down and down because he don't have any power. He don't have any authority. Don't give him anything. Don't say, oh, the devil's after me. No, he's not. No, the blessings are after you. All I'm hearing about all these prophets on YouTube saying all these doom and gloom prophecies are going to hit the United States of America. Judgment's going to fall. Let me tell you something. All the judgment was placed on the back of Jesus. When Jesus was on that cross, he took all the punishment of the sins of the whole world. And he is the atoning sacrifice of our sins, the Bible says. And yes, judgment will come, but not like they're saying it. I'm not going to preach judgment. I'm going to preach grace. I'm coming to the throne of grace. I'm not coming to a throne of judgment. I want to speak blessing for the United States of America. I want to speak grace and mercy upon America. No, oh, judgment's coming. All these people are going to be killed. No, Jesus was already killed. If Jesus hadn't died, this earth would have been already over with, annihilated a long time ago. Say this with me. The devil has to back off. The devil has to back off off when I get there. Amen. Because I really believe that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say it with me. Say it loud. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. And to set the captives free. So, devil, you got to get back. You got to go. You have no authority in Jesus' name. And we take that authority today. Say, Lord, I take that authority. It belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, I will throw out devils. I will throw them out because they don't belong there anymore. I will lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Everybody say amen. amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah.